much for joining live from South by Southwest. We are coming to you from the Samsung Blogger Lounge in Austin, Texas. Give it up for Ben Ha from I Can't Hatch Cheeseburger. Hello, yeah. thank you. Let's talk about, you, you know, bought Cheeseburger in 2007. How has internet culture changed? Because it obviously has evolved and so many other people have jumped into your game. You were one of the first. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. So for us, you know, it's really been about massive uh, ex extension of internet culture into popular culture. Yeah. So you imagine the two of them merging together. We actually predicted that back in 2008. We're like, hey, this feels a little bit like rock and roll for this generation, right? It's a way of expression. It's a way of entertainment. And I think it's going to be a peer-to-peer -peer system. And let's figure out if we can build a platform and, an, and a culture in which people can express themselves. So can we say something is viral anymore? Like, what does that even mean anymore? I, I really kind of cringe every time a journalist says, this video went viral. And I'll I say actually, we do it too, you know? I know, it's but... It's an easy way to describe something that's, that's right. being it's shared. That's right, it's popular. It's being shared, right? Like, like, shared is not a catchable term like viral. But then there are some sites that say that they have virality, you know... They have shareability. True virality is like Rebecca Black and Friday, right? Or Psy and Gangnam Style, mm -hmm. where people who have no motivation or incentive to share the content share it and the media does get involved, but it's really out of, oh my God, this is amazing. When a brand is pushing virality, it's greased. You're launching cheeseburger and Espanol and now. And Espanol, yeah. That's, I, a, that's a big deal. I took French in high school. That was a total mistake. I should have taken Spanish. <laughs> so this is, you know, a new added extension to the cheeseburger network. Why now? Yeah. And, and describe what this is going to mean to the company. So our philosophy, since our early days as a pioneer in this, has been go after markets that we think are underserved. Markets in which people do not have a place that they can go home. There isn't high quality curation and things like that. And I totally think that the Spanish Spanish-speaking market of the United States doesn't really have a great home for internet culture and internet memes. And so why, why not extend ourselves to that area? Are memes and internet culture different depending on language? Absolutely. And, so, you, and, how, yeah. and how are you going to represent that within uh, so, this new site and vertical? So what was interesting about this was that Know Your Meme, which is an encyclopedia of internet culture and virality, yeah. they started seeing people... Um, create sections for other countries. Like, so Brazil had a section and there was a little Brazilian community. And so what we found was that it wasn't translation. It was cross-culturalization. Mm. Um, True Detective, why ha have people connected with that show? So what's interesting is that we're seeing a lot of sharing activity on the power curve, on the very, very important, high-profile house of cars, don't friggin' spoil it for me, you know, all that activity, like the Super Bowl sharing. And then you have a lot of long tail sharing. What we're really missing is that the middle tier, mm -hmm. where people are professional content creators but don't know the tactics of new media, are kind of being left out. Because they're doing old tactics in new uh, formats. But there are shows that just surprise themselves and I think the community by just, you know, people loving it. I mean, you can't create that. It just happens in a way. One of the challenges here is that when you are writing for a shareable piece of content, you must evoke strong emotion. You must evoke strong characters. Weak characters are not going to make you fall in love and want to talk about who these characters are. Because what, what we do with memes is we project ourselves in the shoes of these characters that we identify with. Now, you also have an app called Circa, which I would encourage all of you, if you haven't downloaded it, you should download it. Uh, why was that something that you wanted to be part of? Because it, it's not as much comedic or funny at all much, you know. zero it's, it's harder it's a, news it's, a, it's hard news app it's a hard news mobile application yeah. yeah so what we do is we allow in circa for you to follow specific stories every time a circa updates its article you won't get the background because we already know you read that because there's discrete points and you will only get the update what are the tips i guess uh, to wrap this up yeah uh, to you know to encourage people how do you encourage that shareability how do you encourage the next click so the first thing you got to do is be consistent in your quality you must be able to deliver day in day out it is a marathon not a sprint and you also have to figure out what does your audience want and how do you deliver at the right time in the right format for the right device All right well ben ha thank you so much thank ben ha everyone Just in regards to internet culture, it seems like, like in this new digital nation, we've uh, become like really desensitized and almost like dehumanized. Like I can see, I can look at you on the TV there, and it's like, oh, you know, 
he's, he's just another thing on the TV. He's just a bunch of pixels on my home. Yeah. He runs through some sort of existential crisis. 